Welcome to the latest episode of the Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, <laughs> God, I thought last weekend was hot being stuck in here <laughs> recording an episode of the show for you guys, but Jesus Christ, today is bloody hot. Um, sweating, um, and that's not whiskey sweat, I has, it has to be said, I haven't tasted any whiskey yet, honest, governor. Um, anyway, things I do for you lot. Um, Obviously this week's episode of the show has been highly anticipated um, because, as you can see, it's release series 5 of uh, the ongoing releases from um, North Star Whiskey. And um, as a number of you that are customers of mine will know that uh, um, Ian was not particularly generous with his allocation of Vega this, this time around, it has to be said. so. As you know, um, I only had six bottles, so everybody's name is in the hat. It has to be said, not my hat, I hasten to add. Never really was one for hats, it has to be said. Um, never really got on with them. Um, and uh, so, obviously, uh, at the end of the show, I will be drawing uh, six names from said hat, uh, and you will obviously all have the opportunity to purchase a bottle of um, Vega. Mind you, you might change your mind by the time I've actually finished tasting it, but you probably won't. There you go, that's a bit of a bit of a clue for you. Um, anyway, so as you can see, uh, seven samples. I mean, you know, last time Ian released six, which was just a nice enough amount for the show, but no, he has to release seven this time around. So um, the emergency uh, the emergency glass has been pressed into use, and um, well, I think as I've got seven whiskies to get through, this could drag on a little bit, plus there's the draw. So I think I'm just gonna shut up and introduce today's lineup. Mm. Right, okay, so uh, without further ado, let's have a look at today's lineup. Um, first off, we're going to kick off with a four year old blended Campbelltown malt. Um, now, it has to be said, hats off to Ian for putting um, a young age statement on the bottle. I mean, he could have given it no age statement, uh, uh, would have been practical, that would have been fine. Um, and people probably would have no age statement. Um, and uh, so basically it's a case of, you know, some people look at it and go four years old, good God, that's not going to be even close to ready and uh, um, so it's kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't, I suppose. But, you know, I, I give him credit for, you know, um, doing something a little different. And this is, I think, why North Star has got or achieved in such a short period of time quite a cult following because Ian has is, is attempted to do a few different things, things that some of the other independent bottlers are probably only now just about catching up to doing so um, um, certainly Ian has been you know quite innovative I think um, so this was distilled in April of 2014 bottled in April of this year at 57 percent second bottle I'm looking at is one of my favorite distilleries oh yes you detect the hint of sarcasm there um, it is a McDuff there can be some nice McDuffs, it has to be said. Not all McDuffs kind of attempt to sort of grab you by the throat. And um, Anyway, uh, so this is a refill bourbon hoggy. Uh, it's 11 years old, uh, distilled in November of 2006, bottled in May of this year at 55.2%. Um, needs to say, if it was absolutely bloody dreadful, I wouldn't have put it in the lineup for today's episode of the show now, would I? So, anyway. Uh, the next bottling we're looking at is a Glen Talkers. Uh, this is uh, again 11 years old, although this was distilled in April of 2007, bottled in May of this year. Uh, a refill bourbon um, hoggy, and it was finished in an XPX cask, because as you know, Ian seems to have an absolute refusion of X Pedrosim and F casks. So uh, bottled at 58.9%, so could be interesting. Third bottling, uh, fourth, third bottling, fourth bottling um, is uh, an Orkney, so I think we can pretty much figure out where that one's come from. Uh, it's a, again 11 years old, distilled in March of 2006 uh, and bottled in May of this year. Again another refill uh, Bourbon Hogshead and finished again in Ex Pedro Zimeneth. So 57.8, could be interesting, Young Highland Park. Yeah, Young Highland Park. Um, enough said. Right, okay, and moving on to the fifth one. This is uh, quite an interesting whiskey. This is 
what he's decided to call Spicker, and this is now going to be uh, a, a brand within its own right, a bit like the Vega bottling, I suppose. It's a, a blended Scotch whisky from um, 1997, that's making it 20 years old, bottle of 50, uh, 45.2, and um, when, when he first sort of sent me the list, I looked at it and thought, hello, why is he naming a bottling after a South Korean girl band? But apparently he wasn't, and then sent me this lovely A4 um, PDF with information about said bottling. So apparently, facts are, it isn't dedicated to the South Korean girl band of the same name, because um, apparently his wife wouldn't let him. Um, it is apparently uh, part of the constellation of Virgo, which probably makes sense because it's North Star, isn't it, really? Um, it is allegedly the 16th brightest star in the sky, 250 light years from Earth, and uh, the name Spicker comes from the Latin uh, phrase for ear of wheat, and um, apparently uh, Virgo is indeed the Greek goddess of the hardest. So there you go. That's the reasoning behind uh, calling it Spicker. Um, and uh, like I said, it's a 20 year old blended uh, whiskey, blended Scotch whiskey, I should say. So kind of quite looking forward to tasting that. And I know there's a number of you that have already ordered it, and uh, my entire allocation has indeed gone. So you really want to know whether it's any good or not, don't you? Anyway, um, we shall find out. And the, uh, the next bottling we're looking at is indeed the Vega. Uh, 41 years old this time around. Again, another pre-blended um, malt cask. Uh, again, Ian said he's no great shapes when it comes to blending. So I'm guessing he probably purchased a few of these because he had uh, um, last year's release was 40. This year's release was 41. Um, and I have an, an inkling that next year's release, or the next release in the series, if uh, is uh, Facebook pictures or anything to go by. I mean, come on, you're already go bigging up the next bottling. And we haven't even got this one out of the way yet. Um, anyway, so uh, this is, uh, like I said, distilled in 1976, uh, bottled in May of this year at 46.1% and is indeed 41 years old. And finally, a bit of peat, because I always like to finish with a bit of peat. This is indeed Kulila, uh, a 12 year old Kulila uh, bottled uh, from a refill bourbon hockey. Uh, it was distilled in August of 2006, bottled in May of this year at 54.6%. So there you go, that's this afternoon's little lineup, and uh, we'll keep things trucking on. So let's, uh, let's kick off with a bit of young Campbelltown. <laughs> Right, okay, four-year-old Campbelltown. Mm, I remember sort of <laughs> young sub-ten-year-old Springbank was pretty heavy going, it had to be said, so let's see what the note gives us on this. Serially, obviously, really ozone-y, quite fresh. Um, there's a little impurity lurking in the background, it has to be said. I mean, I'm not surprised given it's four years old. But it's got that lovely kind of um, Campbelltown maltiness, um, along with the saltiness and um, the slight graininess and barley notes. Do you know, for a four-year-old, it's actually pretty... Well, it's got a relative amount of complexity, should we say. There's a little bit of oak as well, slightly buttery, some earth, some fish. You know, I... Uh, and, and the grain has got a lovely crispness to it, yeah. You know, and it kind of like works in with the salt, and um, uh, you know, I, I I like this. I mean, yeah, all right, it's a bit rough and ready, but not too rough. Um, there's some some lovely polished oak. Um, I mean, it's just kind of classically young Campbelltown, but surprisingly not too fainty. So you know, I. I like this. I think this is pretty impressive. So, for those of you that were uh, taken by it, shall we say, that, and have ordered bottles, then I think you're going to actually enjoy this. This is really quite impressive for four years old. Let's see what the palate gives us.
Whoa, my God, that's a salt fest. Really intense. Plenty of alcohol, obviously. Barley, a bit of dustiness. Um, sort of dusty barley, almost almost gristy. Um, malt, more salt, uh, and more salt. A little bit of oily fishiness on 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 the finish. Little bit of fruit, not a huge amount. We're, we're not we're not kind of we're still in kind of the the. the raw youthful kind of phase of this this particular whiskey's development i mean i'm hoping that he's got a few more casks and will age some and just sort of see how they uh, they progress quite high malt you know malt content um in actual fact full malt content in actual fact um but it has that kind of graininess um and and i, and I remember sort of like uh and, and when i initially sort of uh, tasted it it had a an almost kind of grainy sort of intensity on the nose um, but um, yeah I like that I mean it, it, a little bit of water kind of softens it up I believe I'm just just quickly checking because um, I don't have enough water incidentally people there was a question you know they were surprised to see me actually um, uh, use water in the last episode of the show if I have enough of a sample left and and, and it warrants it and realistically this could have done with a little drop of water um, it uh, it does kind of bring out the sort of like the orange notes apparently uh, from looking at my notes but uh, um, does make it a tad more simple um, which is often the case with these young whiskies but I think to start off with that was uh, that was good <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the Mukdaf. Let's see what the nave gives us on this end, shall we? Quite heavy, oily. There's a suggestion of, of that sort of classic Mukdaf industrial notes, but it's actually quite well contained. Um, I'm getting sort of um, bits of a little bit of oak, a bit of honey, lemon balm. Um, Vanilla, bit of coffee, maybe you know it's it's actually quite quite pleasant. Um, it's not got me kind of like bouncing up and down, um, but you know I think as far as Macduff goes, it's it's a pleasant nose. Um, it's certainly not sort of grabbing me by the throat, and it's certainly not going. You know I'm full of industrial fainty burnt rubber yada 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 kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's actually quite pleasant, and I suppose if if you like your malts a little bit on the industrial side, then it's got plenty enough. What I'm trying to say is, it's got plenty enough to sort of offset that slight industrial character, and um, that's really all you're looking for with with these kind of whiskies. You know, you know the distillery's style, and you have to a certain extent accept that style um, but as long as there's something else happening in and around it to uh, kind of mitigate that style um, you know it's not too bad and um, I have to say this isn't this isn't too bad at all so by McDuff's standards this is um, pretty good let's see what the power's like then shall we It's quite, it's okay, it's pleasant. Um, it's quite oily and dense, plenty of oak to start off with. A little bit of green citric fruit kind of comes through, a little bit of sort of gooseberry, maybe kiwi. A um, little bit of little bit of bittering oak on the finish, a little bit of an industrial kind of barley you note. Know, um, a little hard. Um, again, it is Macduff. Um, but pleasant, you know, it's, it's, again, it's not a whiskey that I'm going to sort of eulogise over, shall we say, but I think, um, I think as, uh, you know, as a Macduff, it is quite pleasant. It's, it's certainly got a nice progression. You certainly get, like I said, the sort of oily sort of weightiness of the spirit kind of up front, um, and then a little bit of freshening, and then the oak kind of coming through, um, a bit of a sort of coconutty aftertaste now, now that sort of the alcohol has passed 
Um, and um, checking my notes for, for what it, how it goes with water, and it, it, it is a little bit masked, it has to be said, the, the alcohol's a little bit, but not too much. Um, and it does kind of bring forward the oak a little bit more when you when you stick a little drop of water with it. So um, I, I I think from yeah I don't think that's a, a bad McDuff. And you don't hear me saying that very often. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the Glen Talkers. So this is a refilled bourbon hoggy and finished in XPX cask. So um, see what those give us. Nicely balanced, um, quite luscious, plenty of dried, raisinated, PXy kind of fruit, but not too treacly, not too sweet. Um, there's some barley, there's some almost tea leafy kind of notes. Um, I mean, Glen Talkers has that lovely kind of sort of minerally highlandy kind of character, and um, certainly kind of works quite nicely. Getting a little bit of sort of green wood smoke, um, a bit more barley coming through. It's getting a little bit sweeter. The the the, the, the raisinated fruit is coming across almost like you know that sort of sun dried raisins. Touch of cream caramel, a little bit of treacle now coming through. It's just actually got a lovely complexity. It's really well balanced, and. Um, that that is the key with this. It hasn't, I'm guessing, been finished for very long in the PX because it is just it's not overwhelmed. I'm certainly getting plenty of the of, of the, the distillery character um, along with a little bit of sweetness. And um, yeah, that is a lovely, lovely nose. Let's see what the palate goes. Ooh, it's got a bit of a drying finish. Minerally, almost to the point of saltiness. Really citric. Um, kicks off with the American oak. Gets a lot of creamy, sort of almost on the finish. That the, the oak kind of returns, and it's got that very creamy, buttery, almost kind of French Chardonnay kind of oaky character. Um, and in between you you get the you get the sherry so it kind of kicks off with that sort of vanilla oak then you get sort of a little bit of um dried fruit prune green nuts a little bit of wood smoke and then you get a bit of sort of like citrus a bit of the mineral sort of barley and the sort of Ventorcas character and finally back to the american oak um uh, that is absolutely fantastic palette. I love that. I think that is a stonking whiskey and it is not that expensive. Um, just checking what my price is. $57.95 that is going out at and I think that's that's worth every penny. That is a just a lovely progressive malt. Um, lots of character, really nicely balanced, getting both the wood types, the, the distillery character. Um, really really sort of mm, chewy mm. right okay so let's move on to the Orkney then so this is uh, an 11 year old Orkney again originally uh, aged in refill bourbon and a uh, refill bourbon hoggy and finished in the PX cast so again looking at the colour of it <laughs> Didn't have much of a finish in the in the uh, the PX. Heavy, oily. It's got some nice fruit. It's got some citrus, a little bit of apple, tangerine. Um, it's a, there's a, a funny note in the background. A sort of a slight, slight sulfuriness. Um, and I don't, um, I don't think it's the cask. I, um, 
it's I don't think it's the sherry sulfur to be honest with you um it's a kind of and I hate to say this kind of young slightly dirty um Highland Parky kind of character um there's some nice lemony notes says I mean you know I'm probably being uber critical but yeah it's my job you know it's a, a, a number of you will probably not even notice it you'll probably just go it's got a bit of an earthiness a bit of a you know damp dunnage that kind of thing you know um it's young it's a bit a bit dirty but yeah I and I just think maybe it could have done with maybe a year or two more in the cask just give it a little bit more time just to get rid of those kind of um off notes shall we say and I mean that kind of brings me on to the whole concept I know that there's a uh, to get a, a well-priced malt whiskey these days, you are looking at stuff that is sub-10 years old. I'm not particularly talking about this, but I was tasting a number of bottlings last night, in actual fact, from another independent bottler, all sub-10 years old. And some of them, I was just, I just went, why in God's name you bottled this? It's seven years old. All I got was a nose full of faints. You know, it's just... It's not even got into nappy stage, for God's sake, you know, and it's like you're bottling it, you know, the, the, and, you know, we're not talking, you know, um, some brand new bottling company. We're talking about a bottling company that's been around for quite some time. And, yeah, uh, I thought, Jesus, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel now, you know, if you haven't got anything that's ready for releasing don't bloody well release it, you know, it's kind of sit on it. You don't have to. I mean, all right, I know there's that a monetary angle to the whole thing everybody needs to make money needs to sell their, their whiskey but you know that there, there is a limit you know and um I, and honestly i think i think this should have just waited i think maybe that kind of slightly dirty you know may well have kind of come out with another couple of years in the oak i mean there's there's plenty enough to like about this particular whiskey um yeah there's fruit there's oak um, touch of salt, a little bit of peat, almost kind of, almost medicinally, um, but it's just that, just that, you know, that just grates, it's like fingernails down a blackboard, if you know what I mean, it's sort of like, you know there's a great whiskey, well, alright, probably not great whiskey, but there's a good whiskey there, um, and it's, there's just that one thing that just kind of, mm, anyway, let's see what the power goes. That sulfury, dirty note is a lot more noticeable on the palate, and um, it's got a pleasant, quite heavily peated finish. In actual fact, for Highland Park, um, quite dusty. Um, again, dunnagey, um, lots of sweet fruit, um, bit of honey, bit of barley. Again, I think maybe if that had been left in in, in the oak for a little bit longer, that 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 sort of slightly sulfury kind of dirtiness may work because I don't think it is sherry derived I think it's kind of more sulfury faints rather than sulfury sherry and you know as much as I love all the independent bottling companies and I love I love what Ian's doing I love North Star and I love all the other independents at the end of the day all independents bottle the stuff that they think is ready for bottling and they like and they think is good um, and from time to time we're going to have a difference of opinion um you know ian's probably going to sort of watch this and go oh fucking hell are you what are you talking about um it's just a personal opinion at the end of the day and um i certainly wouldn't want to sort of stop anyone from buying it and giving it a try and seeing seeing what they think i personally am I'm not going to sell it uh, as you know I have sort of you know um, quite quite high standards when it comes to, to, to whiskies and um, I'm afraid sort of in this instance this one doesn't actually come up to my standards so anyway let's try let's move on then and what a whiskey to move on to this
Dicker, uh, 20 year old um, blended scotch. Let's uh, see what uh, the nose gives us on this end. Oh, instant. In Right, okay, so let's move on to the spicker. Mm, what a lovely malt to move on to. Well, it's not a malt, it's a blend. Oh, for God's sake. Right, okay, so uh, let's move swiftly on to the spicker then, shall we? Uh, 20 year old blended whiskey, uh, aged in combination, I believe, American oak and uh, European sherry. So, and, and as you can see, probably quite a large amount of uh, sherry in there. So let's see what those goes. There's a lot of sherry on the nose, um, lots of treacle, sort of raisins, prunes, more treacle, luscious. Although there's a lovely kind of edgy crispness from the grain which just stops the sherry being too dominant. There's a little bit of American oak notes coming through, a little bit of barley, a bit of buttery oak. That is absolutely stunning um, and um, it's getting a little bit rummy now I'm getting that sort of dark almost molasses kind of sort of dried fruits but I'm getting that nutty kind of American oak I mean that is just this is just a gorgeous blend um, and um, oh I just keep going with that a little bit of coffee now a um, bit of wood smoke sort of almost kind of almost sandalwoody um oh that's absolutely fantastic i mean you know a lot of people think that i hate sherry and um, as i've said on oh god knows how many times now uh, you know sherry monsters are really not my kind of cup of tea it's because of the lack of light and shade but this just has absolutely loads of it you know it's got I want more than just oh sherry. Um, this, is, this is absolutely gorgeous, and um, if Ian can keep sort of finding casks of uh, of this quality uh, blended stuff, then Spicker is going to be sort of a bit like uh, Vega, and um, you know certainly uh, have its followers, shall we say? So, for those of you that have purchased bottles of this, and um, there are quite a few of you, um, you're gonna love this. Let's see what the palette's like. Touch lighter on the palate, there's a bit more grain influence. Um, sort of the grainy dried fruit is a lot more noticeable, yes. There's the dark, slightly treacly, molassy kind of uh, sherry, herbally, oloroso y sort of sherry character, sort of just sitting kind of in the background. Not getting quite so much of the American oak character. It does seem to be more about the sherry and the grain on the palate. Lovely chocolatey aftertaste, though. I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, touch of green nuts again sort of really nice kind of blending of the dried fruit character of the um, uh, the, the, the sherry and the dried fruit character of the, the grain malt is kind of more more or less kind of in a sort of supportive way I guess um, it's kind of giving it a bit of fullness rather than giving it sort of like some huge over multi kind of character and I think that's really nicely balanced um, I like whiskies that are sort of a little bit sort of two-dimensional when it comes to sort of like nose palate kind of character and you sort of go hmm that's quite interesting and then you taste it and go oh, well that's a bit different to the nose um, sometimes it's kind of nice sometimes it's it's sort of like yeah you sort of maybe think that one of the elements is uh, a little bit more interesting than uh, than the other but in this in this case i really like that kind of um that difference shall we say and um all i can say the finish is really really good i mean i, I like my chocolate and um ooh, chocolate and whiskey ooh, spot on suits you sir <laughs> Right, okay, and let's move on to the Vega. I know this is what uh, what everybody wants to know. Uh, what is it like? Um, 
Well, we shall find out. Oh, bloody hell, that's good. Um, it has that wonderful old dark Armagnac fruit, um, prune, walnut, a bit of violet, a bit of incense, um, treacle, heather. Mm, God, bloody hell. I mean, and this is where it all falls apart. Well, not, not the whiskey, but my kind of argument against old sherry, uh, sherry monsters. Once sherry gets to that kind of age, this sort of age, all right, yes, there's no distillery character, but the secondary and the tertiary character that you get from old sherry is just absolutely stunning, you know, and um, you kind of forgive it. It's just sort of like the intermediate period of, of sherry monsters where you're going, you know, but, oh, this is just... Oh, it's just so mature. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I know, I know there's going to be people that will miss out on getting a bottle of it. And um, don't blame me. Blame Ian for not giving me enough of an allocation. You know, take it up with North Star. Send them rude emails. Don't send me them. Um, oh, it's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, it's just mellow, mature. It's probably not the whiskey for sort of like 30 degree heat, it has to be said, and I'm still sweating like a pig. Um, it's, you know, it's, your, it's your, your winter dram, you know, with a big cigar and an open fire and all that kind of stuff, but, oh, stunning. Let's see what the power's like. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Right, there you go, that's that's my tasting note for that. No, um, absolutely gorgeous, luscious, again, Armagnac dried fruits, prunes, raisins, walnuts, um, treacle, a little bit of toffee. Lovely vibrancy though, there's a crisp citric character. I mean, I don't know what the malts that this Originally was probably nobody knows I imagine and, and it does make you wonder doesn't it um, how these things come to be and um, one imagines it's basically you know the distillery's manager or master blender or whatever decides on a project and and sort of you know blends these uh, components sticks them into casks and then said distillery manager or blender leaves, new manager distiller blender comes in different ideas different things they want to do said casks get forgotten about. I mean, good God, you know, the, when, when you've got distilleries, they've got, you know, tens of thousands of casks and pretty piss poor inventories. Um, and there are a few of them out there. Suddenly, you know, these get lost and then suddenly they turn up and they go, what the hell are we going to do with these? You know, and, you know, somebody as, as savvy as Ian goes, oh, well, I'll buy those. And, um, oh, that's just stunning. The finish on that is just kind of lovely sort of dark milk, you know, or sort of dark and milk chocolate, a bit of brandy butter, um, a little bit more sort of prune, almond, walnut, oh, it's just, oh, stunning, and I'm, yeah, please don't shoot me, but, you know, those of you that miss out on this, I'm missing out on something rather special, but those of you that don't miss out, and we will do the draw later, honest, I haven't forgotten. Right, okay, time to bash one's palate with a bit of peat, because um, after a big sherry monster like that, even a lovely mature and um, gorgeously old sherry monster, nothing like a bit of peat to finish off, is there? So, 12-year-old uh, Colila, um, all made aged in, uh, well, aged in um, refill bourbon hoggies, so let's see what those goes. Classic, lovely Colila. Um, quite rich, quite sort of full, um, quite barley, got a lovely sweetness, subtly oat, a little bit of, not hugely peated, um, but enough, it's got that sort of slightly kind of, slightly medicinal, slightly seaweedy, sort of peaty character, um, 
but what I like about it is the fullness it's not one dimensional it's got some some lovely weight to it um, and um, touch of coffee um, and lovely subtle oak um, not sort of too impinging just nicely balanced hmm. see what the power's like Oh, that's got to grab you by the um, what's it's kind of finish. Um, quite salty, quite intense. Um, it's got some a little bit more oak to kick off on the palate, a little bit more creaminess, a little bit more of the vanillins. Um, saltiness really kicks in and really lingers, it has to be said. There's a touch of cocoa, um, a touch of malt extract, moderately peated, although that peat is quite subtle. Um, quite earthy with a, just a faint medicinal note um, but again it's that classic sort of sweet barleyed style of Kalila um, which uh, is more of the, the, you know, the sort of modernish Kalila I mean I remember Kalila going back a fair few years when it was a lot more intense a lot more briny a lot more citric and since then it's become a bit more fuller a bit more oilier a bit more fruity in relative terms anyway and um, this is kind of following on in that kind of classic modern and Colila style you know lots of lovely weight it's not one dimensional um, and um, oh that's got a, a real salty finish it has to be said right okay so uh, let's sum today's episode of the show up um, the Campbelltown blend, yep, um, it was young, it was a bit raw, a bit rough at the edges, but uh, um, it kind of appealed to me, it has to be said, and um, it just goes to show that sort of you know, young Campbelltown malts do seem to, 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 to be pretty drinkable, I mean, uh, which was quite a surprise to me considering, you know, uh, I, I have tasted sort of young Springbank, which has been a bit... Um, what was it uh, that somebody once said, Bambi on Ice, which uh, was uh, quite um, quite a good way of, of describing sort of young Springbank. And, um, but, you know, I, I, I really quite enjoyed that. The Macduff, well, um, okay, it's not the worst Macduff I've ever come across. I mean, it kind of had its pluses, it had its minuses, I suppose, at the end of the day. And uh, although um, it... Like I said, it, it was okay. It's if that if you like that kind of style of whiskey, it's going to appeal to you. There was certainly enough of uh, the sort of sweetness of the barley and sort of other, other factors to sort of mitigate the slight industrial character. But uh, at the end of the day, it's still M Macduff. Um, the uh, the Glen Talkers, I really like the Glen Talkers. Um, lovely complexity uh, and certainly kind of like you know the, the Sort of American oak kind of bookended the, the sort of sherry finish and so it kicked off with the American oak and then you've got the sherry and then you've got the distillery character and it kind of finished with a nice big chunk of American oak and uh, I really really liked that and like I said I thought that was that was really good value. The Orkney, um, well I mean you know once upon a time sort of 12 year old Highland Park was a kind of a go-to whiskey it certainly isn't anymore and um this just kind of i suppose shows the shortcomings of of, of highland park at this kind of age and um although again not a bad whiskey um it certainly had you know plenty of plus points um the, the sort of the minus is just kind of were a little bit too much for me shall we say um, the Spicker, yeah, I, I got a stunning blend, absolutely stunning, and I think sort of you guys that have purchased it without um, having the faintest idea of what it was all about are certainly going to really, really enjoy it. And you know, given the fact it's a 20 year old blended whiskey and it was what, um, 40, 40, 43.95, something like that, I mean, well, God, yeah, bargain, absolute bargain. 
Um, the Vega, yeah, really, really stunning. Um, lovely old sherry character, um, and um, like I said, I've not forgotten about the, the, the draw, which will happen um, when I've finished. And finally, the Kalila. Yeah, uh, uh, again, a lovely modern style Kalila. Um, not just all about the peat, it certainly has some lovely sort of barley character, some honey um, and, and some sweetness to sort of offset the peat. And the peat wasn't huge, the peat was quite moderate and um, yeah, I, I thought that was very, very impressive. So uh, I think overall, you know, Series 5 from Northstar uh, has been a great success. I mean, yes, there's a couple of that, that really don't sort of like, you know, um, float my boat, so to speak, but I think... I think on the whole, uh, yeah, very impressive. So, time for a, a draw, I think. Right, okay, so have said hat. Um, let's, uh, let's draw six names from the hat for who gets the opportunity to purchase a bottle of, uh, of Vega. And um, first name out of the hat is Adam Irvine. So, congratulations to you. Russell about. Uh, second name out of the hat, Matthias Ludes. Uh, congratulations to you. Uh, third name out of the hat is Witold Kaplinski. So congratulations. And the fourth name is Anthony Collinson. Uh, the penultimate name out of the hat is Ian Sunderland. And the last one, could it be you as they say? Ed Cave. So congratulations to all six of you. You get the opportunity to purchase uh, a bottle of Vega. Um, to all the other customers, I'm really sorry that you didn't get uh, the opportunity, um, but uh, for those of you that have ordered other bottles from this particular series, obviously you have been successful. And I will be contacting you all on Monday and sending you invoices and asking you for some money. So anyway, that's this week's episode of the show in the bag. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Um, next week, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what we're doing next week, but it's going to be an interesting episode of the show. Well, they're, they're always interesting, aren't they, at the end of the day? Uh, and I've got a few interesting episodes uh, lined up, shall we say. So um, as I don't appear to have any whiskey left, uh, all I shall say is good afternoon and um, good ramming.